regular white paper so we can yeah. see your writing. Say it again. Can you write it on regular white paper so we can see what you're writing? Or on the board. Five twenty-five e to the twelve. <laughs> And I'm getting that this is equal to 3.48 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Joules, right? How do I get electron volts from that? There we go. The negative 14. Minus 19. Yeah. <laughs> I know, like nine look like four. Okay. And this is uh, the, the meaning of this is that this is joules per electron volt. So if we divide by that, I'm getting that it's about yeah, about two point one seven, right? About two point two electron volts. Yeah. So those numbers are 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds times 525 times 10 to the 12th hertz, right? It's about 2.17. Do you guys get that? Oh, yeah. There we go, right? Now, how would we get the upper and lower limits to that? What? Do the same thing? Do the same thing. Yeah, we do the same thing, only we'd use, we'd have to wangle it. Wouldn't we wangle it? I call this wangling, right? So I'm going to take this. I'm going to go through this and we get a different extrapolation, right? Oh, we have to do the minimum and maximum ones too. Get to? You get to do the minimum and maximum. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mr. Mike, yeah. should we be using the actual Planck's constant then? Or should we be using the slope three sign? No, no, use actual Planck's constant. I, mean, I would say use Planck's constant. Now, on step four, it says use an extrapolation of the cutoff frequency to deduce the work function in electron volts. Express it as a best guess with an upper and lower limit. Right? Isn't your upper limit going to be read the graph here? Aren't you going to read the graph right here? Yeah. yeah, isn't that something like 500, that's 575, maybe it's 580. Wait, why wouldn't you just read it where the point was? Say it again? Why wouldn't you just read it where the, the first point was? First point. No, we need to look at where it hits the x-axis. Here's the, the cutoff, yeah? Okay. I'm not going to read it up here, I'm going to read it right there. Right? Because this is where it extrapolates to zero kinetic energy, right? So this is my upper limit for the work function. This is my lower limit, which looks to be just maybe, maybe slightly below 450, right? But maybe it's just 450. I don't know. You can, you can nuance that all you want. Do the same exact calculation, right? This is going to be 580. The other time it's going to be 450. One will give you an upper limit. One will give you a lower limit. Okay. Good luck. Go get them. What's this for? Spanish, Spanish. Like Spanish. Like Try to work para el coche mis pantalones de salen sin hijos into the conversation. <laughs> yeah, Murray. Murray's is all around. Dude. That's all I can say. Tu calculadora está poseída por el diablo. Tu calculadora is possessed by the devil. Para el coche mis pantalones de salen sin hijos. Stop the car, my pants are burning. And then after that, it's like, I feel you know, like Juan Baño and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Baño. So if I go to some Spanish-speaking country, I'll just let loose with my three sentences and then <laughs> sit back and watch the, watch the confusion say, <laughs> he says his pants are burning. <laughs> but we're not in worry about him. <laughs> All right. So we did four. That's because I'm random. So let's do the slope. Shall we do the slope? Find the slope of the best fit line. When you find the slope of a best fit line, do not use the points, the first and last points. Please use a reading of the graph. So read the graph at the end, right? Okay. So to find the best fit slope, I'm just reading this, okay? And I think that that hits right there. And I think it hits just below that point. And that is, what is that? This is 3.0. That's 2.8. I'm going to say 2.78. Right? So my best fit slope 
is, I'm going to say it's 2.78 volts, right? This is electron volts, right? And I'm going to divide this by, and now I've got to do my run. That's 1,200. This is uh, 525. So again, right, and then this is times 10 to the 12th. Don't forget that. That's kind of important. Okay. So when you do this, again, read the very ends of the lines. Don't waste the first and last points. They'll ding you for that. Would you okay. at the bottom read the difference? Didn't I do that? Oh. Uh, I think I did that. I think you did like 1,200. Times 10 to the 15th. Didn't I go minus? No, minus. I think that's minus. Right? So 2.78 is the rise. It's easy. It rises from zero. Just as the phoenix rises from its own ashes. Yeah. Okay? So it rises from zero to 2.78 is what is my take on that. And I've got a degree in physics, so I should know. Right? And then the run is 1,200 minus 525. Right. Now, this is going to give us communist units for Planck's constant. The slope of this thing is Planck's constant, right? Energy equals HF. <coughs> F is our x-axis. H would therefore be the slope. Yes. Okay. okay. So now I can now I can figure this out, right? Uh, 2.78 divided by. Here's the best way to do that on your calculator. Notice if you do it on your calculator, you've got to make sure you're also dividing by 1 times 10 to the 12. 12. Yeah. Some people like go times uh, that and then it doesn't divide by one. Oh, wait, so, so you can do, you can do um, 1,200 minus 125 times 10 to the 12 and then... You sure can, or you can make them 10 to the 12 to begin with, right? But make sure you put the denominator all in parentheses, right? Basically, on your calculator, you can do that, right? I'm getting that this is 4.18, 4.12. For, for what? Times 10 to the minus 15. But the, these units are electron volt seconds. Okay, because this is 1 over seconds. This is hertz, right? And 1 over, one over seconds is seconds, I think, last time I checked, right? So our units are electron volt seconds. But Planck's constant is not in electron volt seconds, it's in jowl seconds, last time I checked, right? So how do we convert electron volt seconds to jowl seconds? Multiply by 1.602 times 10 to the 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. And this is joules per electron volt, right? So take that answer and go times. Why is yours 2.78? And this is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I did to the point. 6.6. 6, whoops. I don't know that makes it big. I'm going to say 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds. <coughs> it's supposed to be. 6.626 times 10 to the. Negative 34th, and we got 6.6. .6. That's reasonably good, right? One would hope that we would get Planck's constant off of that. So this is this should be a clue, right? On the test, if you're getting something that's wildly not Planck's constant, you know, readjust, add random stuff, you know. Okay. There we have it. Now, how do we find the maximum amount that Planck's constant could be? Would that be the slope of the steepest line? No. Indeed, it would be. Yes. Okay, so how do we make the steepest line? We're getting, we're going to go into like a little territory that I'm not exactly sure about. I could be teaching you wrong, and I'm sorry about that. Okay, but I think we do. I think we can just use the points in the data table, can't we? Yeah, we can. Yeah, because we are supposed to use, according to ID, whether for good or for bad, the actual error of our points, right? Yeah. So why don't you just use the slope of your, like? Because the best fit line might not go through any of your points. So you're supposed to judge the best fit line and use its endpoints for the best fit line. Right, right, right. We're talking about the maximum. Max and min, we're going to use the points in the data table. Exactly. Point, point form. Yeah. I'll show you.